Hey everybody, welcome to the Faith and Fandom Podcast. I'm Hector. And I'm Matilda Kane. Mat- <laughs> Matilda Kane cosplay. <laughs> Matilda Kane cosplay. I've I still like every time I try to find you like on Instagram or tag you at something, I still struggle to remember that that's um it always reminds me of like someone in Oswald Cobblepot's family or something <laughs> like if, 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 and, and like my mental lore and association Matilda Kane is a cousin of Oswald Cobblepot then maybe we need to add that to the list of things that need to be be cosplayed <laughs> uh, yes and get Dennis to like hook up with you and you guys can do like a tag team yes I do have a penguin costume planned eventually okay. eventually okay so. Um, so, uh, I've known Matilda Kane for, I don't know, man. Like I stopped counting after it, about three. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been a few years and, um, she's been really active and involved in my life, but I, I wanted to have her with us today because from everything I know, she's one of the most active and I will say influential people in the North Carolina Comic-Con scene. Uh, active. <laughs> uh, I, I, I say influential because I mean, you, you, you have worn a lot of hats. A lot. Um, a lot of hats, but you still have like a lot of roles. Um, when I first met you in doing this, you were doing a Artist Alley booth. Correct. And um, what was the name of your it booth? It was Cuddly Curiosities, and that kind of started when I decided to take my hobby of crochet and I uh, started making little animals and things like that. And I was like, you know what? I could do superheroes. And it just kind of snowballed. And then that's where it went. So that's how that hat came about. <laughs> um, how long has uh, Cuddly Curiosities been gone? Is, been, it, is it gone? It is, is it gone? It is, for the public, most part, it is gone every now and then. I do come out of retirement. Yeah, Rose is, Rose is waiting something. on a Butterfree. I know, it is still in pieces <laughs> at the house. It is is in pieces, but I promise. She 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 believes in you. Yeah, you need, you need to uh, send me little pings every now and then until, like every week until Heroes Con, until I get it done. Um, it has been out of commission for, I'm going to say about a year and a half, two years now, um, is when I've officially stopped showing in Artist Alley. Um, so, like, it... You know, be as open as you want to this. What was the what was the factor that made you shift away from that? Um, it really wasn't all. It, it wasn't a hundred percent negative. Um, you know, the cosplay end of or the cosplay hat got bigger, and between me and the kids and things like that. Um, and then with there was a, a sudden influx of a lot of plushie dealers and people who were making plushies and people who were also crocheting, you know, these plushie things. And it just got to the point where it was. You know, I was actually losing money traveling to these cons and, and buying tables and stuff like that. And I was having more fun in the costumes. And so I said, decided if I'm going to lose money, I'm going to do costumes. Yeah. And so that's where it went. It, like I said, it wasn't negative per se. It was just a decision of where my money was going to go. And for the, you know, I can say that personally, your plushes are, one, they were fantastic. And I, I, I personally credit you with that becoming like more of a trend. Um, in, at least in this area. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, that, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. <laughs> um, I, I believe that you were the, the kind of kickstart for that influx. But, um, you know, imitation is the, you know, I guess the, the biggest best form of flattery. Best yeah. form of flattery. But that's why you can't be mad about it. I mean. It, but it's also the, the best form of like, uh, I don't know, maybe betrayal in the <laughs> sense kick that. Kick you while you're down kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kick you while you're down. I like what you're doing, so I'm going to take it from you. Exactly. and try and like make sure you can't do it anymore um but uh when I, you i first started noticing your cosplay life it was more for your kids exactly then <laughs> uh and your kids even have their own cosplay uh page and title right what's that that is adventures in cosplay um or if you're just on facebook it's facebook.com backslash adventures in cosplay davis there are two that's another imitation there's another one that's <laughs> popped up Adventures in Cosplay Davis is the one that you want. <laughs> okay, and your boys have worn some of the dopest cosplay I've ever seen. And um, it, it's not just you, it's your, also your husband, 
that helps with some of those? Is that he does. He does. He builds props. He doesn't do a lot. He doesn't do any of the sewing. He doesn't want anything to do with that. But if it comes to like fabricating something, making props, things like that, he's got huge plans for them for Heroes Con this year. So you may want to look out for that. I'm not going to talk about it because they'll probably kick me in the head. But um, he's really gotten into fabricating and things like that. So is this 3D printer on steadily grinding? The 3D printer um, had its funeral a few weeks ago. No. So yeah, um, we are currently saving up for a new one. Okay. So it will be back probably. We probably won't have it until next year. But is uh, he still doing the thing with Dustin? The like YouTube? I don't think so. Not so much. Okay. Not so much. Um, but so. It went from you making really great costumes for your kids, then that kind of led to you judging. Yes. You were ju yeah, That's you where it, it started. So you were a cosplay judge because of your crafting. It's, yes. Um, why, what, what about doing it for your kids? Why are your kids before you? Um, that I think a lot comes down to self-esteem, even now, um, with everything that I do with cosplay and stuff like that, I really don't see myself in this elevated position. Um, but, uh, for the kids, like I'm one of those people who I cannot, my anxiety sometimes cripples me that I can't do it, but if somebody else wants it or somebody else can do it, I'm the first one out of my seat and running to go take care of it. Um, and plus who doesn't like a kid in costume? I yeah. mean, they're cuter than I am. I'm not, I'm not going to deny it. So um, it just kind of started there. And then I saw how much fun they were having. And, you know, then Carrie Marks with Charlotte Comic Con come up and said, hey, you're kind of the kids cosplay expert in this area. Will you come be our kids cosplay judge? And from there, I had to build a costume. So they've just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And I've started doing more things. And, and here we are. <laughs> you are. And so you're, you're the pro for crafting in our area. I, I'd say that for kids' costumes, easily. I, I, I don't know. The kids' costumes, since I have started, the kids' craft and kids' costume uh, contests are brutal now. I mean, I'm seeing some things, and these are kids, like, building them themselves. And okay. I am amazed. Like, I'm glad that I did not pick this time to, to start my kids into it, because there's no way. No way. But but you you were a legend, I'll say that. Uh, in the special, <laughs> back then, back then. Especially in the Charlotte region. But, I mean... You're pretty well traveled. Like you, you're in Georgia. You're in South Carolina. You're you're kind of all over the place. All over the place, yeah. Where you're somewhere like far north recently, right? Or, or is there something in Ohio maybe? Or? No, I haven't been to Ohio. I haven't gone up north. Um, Virginia is about okay. as far north as Virginia. Gone. That's what yeah. I was thinking. I know it's not the same as Ohio, <laughs> but um, I think Virginia is the furthest I've done for a show too. Um, but in doing that, you, you're also an award winner. For your cosplays now, right? Your kids won awards. You you've won awards, right? Uh, yeah. The for the past two years, uh, myself, Dingback Cosplay, Super Carry, and So Curious Kitten Cosplay have entered at Heroes Con um, in the Master Class, and we've won the past two years for Master Class group. So, so fancy, not even just regular Master Class. <laughs> well, it was Marky's fault. She uh, she uh, was the one who had won contests previously, and so because of that, we had to enter Master Class and. So there you go. Now we're all stuck. So, so what <laughs> what qualifies as a master class for cosplay? Uh, for uh, usually for a master class, uh, it's somebody who has won competitions before. Um, it's somebody who's been around for a while. Um, I know for Charlotte Comic Con, we've just created a pro category, and it is for people specifically who have won in the amateur class. They get bumped up to pro um, if they come up to the table and enter an amateur and we look at them and take one, you know, take a little look and we're like, oh, no, this does not belong in this class. You're going to pro, you know, pro kind of thing. Um, so it really just depends on the con or the contest rules as to what, you know, deems you as a master class or a pro or whatever. So you are an artist alley vendor making plushies. And I just say this, Mike, your shepherd book and river song that you made for me are literally two of my favorite things if you're ever in my house or you see our videos or anything like that you're probably going to see you know shepherd and river laying around and um i'm probably going to introduce alex kingston to your river oh yeah soon I, I i meant to do it at this last summer but uh when i see her again i'm gonna do that yay um but someone came over to my house recently like why do you have a shepherd book and i'm like why don't you because <laughs> exactly. everyone needs that 
Um, so you did plushies, you have made kids costumes, you have been a cosplay judge. Um, you also, what, you did some other Artist Alley endeavors too, right? Um, for a while there you were making um, cups. Oh yeah, that was the same thing. It was just kind of like a side thing. You know, when, when the, the plushy thing was kind of dying down, I was like, I need to get something small price point to sit out. Um, and so I started buying up all these bulk mugs. Like I would go to thrift store and find plain mugs or I would go to Walmart where they have like the 98 cent mugs and just paint random nerdy things on them and wine glasses and things like that. I have one of yours, uh, the dead shot one. I will rain down on you like the Holy Spirit. Yep. That's uh, You actually inspired that, so I'm glad you got it. <laughs> uh, that, that is my favorite one. And um, like that is, that is my, it's, it's not my favorite coffee cup because it's a, that big too much of a it's, big it's mouth. More of a, a soup bowl. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's my ice. It's my ice cream bowl. It's my ice cream and my go. cereal bowl, and um, I, it just makes me smile every time I see it. So, um, you you've been at Artist Alley for a while. Do you see any kind of return for that for you? Uh, not really so much. Um, I'll, it's been long enough that people really don't like the newcomers and things don't really rem know who I am. Um, but you know, I did make a lot of friends, so that's where my return has come. I've made so many contacts with people that I've kept in touch with over the years. Um, and we kind of help promote each other's projects and things like that when we have things going on. So there's where my return is. <laughs> okay, so that that is your new arena. That is, yeah. Um, let's see. What what are your goals for, like, what you're doing in con life, uh, for cosplay, for judging, for all, all these things? Like, what are your goals? Like, do you have any kind of, like, direction you're heading? Well, I know you're expecting me to say that you turn it into a career. That's what. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Like, um, no, not at all. Really, my, my only goal in, in doing all of this is as long as I'm still finding it fun, um, then I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, you know, I don't really know where it's going. It, you know, this whole thing has kind of exploded on me this year um, with a new hat, which is the cosplay guest thing. Um so, you know, it, it just keeps evolving and things like that. And as long as I can keep evolving and growing and things with it and having fun with it, then we're going to keep riding it. Um, well, just since you mentioned this, what do you think should have to be the prerequisite to be considered a cosplay guest? Should there be a prerequisite? What do you think one is? Uh, and, you know, do you, do you have any thoughts? <sighs> you know, I, as, as long as there's somebody who isn't out like bashing people and things like that they're they're a positive influence on people um as long as that con runner wants that person there um or as long as the fans or the con goers are requesting this person to go there i think that's really all it should take um because there is sort of a kind of elitist attitude with some of the cosplay world um and it is it is really hard to get into it i didn't think that i would be doing it at this point um, so, you know, I just think if, if somebody wants you there, then that should be it. As a cosplay guest, what do you expect? Um, I expect, again, the positive attitude. No, like, um, like if someone's offering you. Offering me. A guest spot. Uh, what, what, what am I getting? What, what, what is your, uh, your rider? <laughs> <laughs> like, right now, uh, <laughs> it's a table. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much it. Like, um, this one I'm doing this weekend. Uh, because not every show that even has guests exactly, will give you a table. Exactly. If you're doing a small con, it's going to be iffy, and the table may be all you can expect. Some of the larger cons aren't giving their guests Some tables. of the larger <laughs> cons are not. Um, you know what? At, at this point, if they can give me one good meal, a table, and a badge for me and whoever's coming to help me, you know, for good. Uh, now, if it's a bigger con or I have to travel really far for it, yeah, I might ask for a little travel expense. But, you know, that's not always going to be a given. If I really want to go, I'm going to go. So. What? How far would it have to be before you ask for travel? Ooh, I haven't gotten to that point yet, so I don't okay, know. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, for me, um, uh, recently I was invited to um, do Kamehameha Con. That's in Hawaii, isn't it? No, that, no? Uh, Dallas. Dallas, okay. Um, and the one of the, it was the by it was the manager of the Dragon Ball Z voice actors, 
Um, and he hit me up just to say that he liked what I was doing. He liked the Vegeta Bible study and, you know, kind of made me nauseous when I saw him like walking to my table and he opened up, he opened up like a uh, book three and he's sitting there reading the Vegeta chapter. And I'm like, Oh, don't sue me. Don't sue me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and that, that's where it was at. And, um, I look like a porg. Um, <laughs> Uh, by the way, your porg was really cute this weekend. Um, you, uh, Cand- uh, Matilda cosplayed as a uh, porg this weekend at Charlotte, Charlotte Comic Con. Yeah, I was supposed to be an Ewok, and I kind of uh, changed my mind last minute, and I was like, I'm going to be a porg. There you go. <laughs> it, it worked. It worked. Um, but, uh, like, they offered, they offered me to be, I guess, a guest, but not really a guest, because the stipulation was... Uh, if I go, they'll cover my airfare and my hotel. But I still have to pay five hundred dollars for an artist table. So I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I mean, the, the cost of airfare here lately. Yeah, but five hundred dollars is a lot for an artist an, table. But and then what? My scary thing was if I do five hundred dollars for an artist table, and they fly me. Books are heavy. Yeah, you're going to have to ship those. I'm going to have to ship those. Yeah. And then if I don't sell the things... You're going to have to ship them back. <laughs> I have to ship them back. And I'm just like, uh, I would rather drive. Um, I would rather drive to Dallas and back with my car of books than fly. But I was just like, you know what, I, I don't feel like making... But I was like, I'm honored. But, you know, at that point I was like, look, give me the table and I'll cover yeah. the other things. But, um, you know, I, I heard... Not this is room. I was told of a cosplayer that uh, was turned down from a large upcoming show because they didn't have at least four hundred thousand Facebook likes. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> I don't even have two hundred. I don't even have two hundred Facebook likes. So you know, <laughs> that's not even. I I do not equate success with the number of likes on social media. And um, I actually I talked about that in that scenario. Um, do you ever watch uh, Black Mirror? No. Mm-mm. Um, there, there's a uh, episode of Black Mirror called Nosedive with Bryce Dallas Howard, and um, like where society gets to the point that uh, they actually chip you, so where you can see people's social media status score. Oh, I think I saw a preview of that on of, Facebook. Bu- like China, China's getting ready to start doing that or something. Like something that, like that, yeah. yeah. But you could actually see their status above their head. And so, like, if someone bumped you in traffic, you can lower their score and stuff like that. And, um, you know, that's, I talked about the whole cosplay thing and the likes. And my first, um, the first bookstore I approached about carrying faith and fandom uh, told me, they didn't even ask what the books were or what they were about. They didn't even ask to look at them. Their first question was, how many Facebook likes do you have? Now, I had just started so, yeah, of course the, you don't have that many. The books were, like, the first book, and the first book's not even <laughs> that great, and the first book was out, and I had maybe 100 likes. And I'm like, and so they shut me down for that. And, like, I'm super proud. I'm like, I'm five years deep. I'm a fat, hefty nerd that has not sexy products to sell at his table, and I've got, like, 2,500 Facebook likes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's a freaking badge of honor. That's, that is a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, that's still not enough for some people but it's just crazy like how that's measured but I didn't, like have you run into that like do you pitch yourself as a guest i do not pitch myself as a guest to be here so much with you that may come um but the cons that i'm doing this year i was actually approached um okay just because like i said it, this isn't a career thing for me it's a hobby um i i go to these cons to meet people um i go to charlotte comic-con to judge kids cosplay contests and to mentor those kids um I go to have fun is pretty much what it is. And um, the, the reason that if I'm selling something at my cosplay table, nine times out of ten, at least 50% of those profits are going to charity. So. Okay. Um, so just to ask this, what has, or like, are there any other hats you wear, though, just in the con world before, like, I go from that? Because, so we've covered Artist Alley. We've covered uh, Adventures in Cosplay, Matilda Kane Cosplay. We've covered um, Judging uh, now you're also a guest, a guest with a table and your fancy prints. In my fancy pants, yes. Uh, I can't think of anything else I've done actually just con-related. 
um, outside of like the costuming groups and things like that. Um, no, nothing, nothing with cons that I can think of, like a job. Yeah. Um, just to ask this, what has been your favorite show so far? Oh. Like, it can be a specific or it can be a, like a reoccurring thing. Like, is there a show? Like, on now or used to be on? You, Are we talking? Whatever you want. It's your answer. Oh, gosh. Um, on right now. Cosplay show. I meant, like, Comic-Con. Oh, like, Comic-Con show. What's your favorite okay. Comic-Con? Sorry. like My favorite Comic-Con show. Okay. I'm sitting here thinking. I thought you were thinking. Okay. <laughs> that, that's a lot of options, right? I work today, Hector. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Favorite. Oh, you're going to make me do that. You're going to make me do that knowing these people are probably listening to this thing. Well, you, you <laughs> don't have to answer. I, and I doubt that many um, people. <laughs> we have listeners. And it surprises me like when people like people will come up and find me like at shows and stuff. We love your podcast. I'm like, you listen to that? Um <laughs> But um, well, I like I like different ones for different reasons. I mean, obviously, Dragon Con is a huge one for me. Um, I'm not a guest there. That is my I go and I have fun. We don't have kids. Um, me and my husband go down. That's our anniversary weekend, um, and we just go down and have fun. Uh, Charlotte Comic Con I love because I get to see all these kids growing with their cosplay and things like that. I get to see old friends. Heroes Con I get to run around and meet you know artists like last year. I about lost my mind when Scotty Young pulled me out of line to take a picture with me in my Gertrude costume. That was a great um, costume. Oh, I was, that, that's like one of my crowning moments. Um, you know, like every con has something that I like. So it's really hard to go through and pick just this one is the best one. Do you, do, do, and I, I know you, you don't want to be like, Negative, but uh, is there one that you don't like, or that is your? What's been your like least favorite con experience? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> if 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 your look that I'm interpreting is the right one, that show's gone anyway. So go um, for it. <laughs> well, it wasn't horrible. But go, just just be just be real. Um, that whole thing's dissolved. I, I, I will say that XCon was pretty bad for me but that was in the artist alley hat that's that was the beginning of the for cuddly curiosities so you know it it that might have had a little bit to do with the bad taste of my mouth left yes. for it so yeah it's um that was just the first con where i had way i was way in the red for that con with an artist alley table um you met eugene though i did meet eugene <laughs> And I'm gonna meet Abraham this summer. You are gonna meet Abraham this summer. That's like that's, that's that's like my ultimate bromance. I love Eugene and Abraham so much. I cried and cried and cried when they killed him. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to meeting him this summer too. Um, and you always hate that when an experience is bad for people. Yeah. And because like it's like for instance, um, I just did a. I did LexingCon this past weekend, mm -hmm. and um, and this isn't a knock on them. I get the show completely that it's you know it's hard to always promote things. It was smaller attendance than yeah than pretty much any show of theirs that I've seen. Yeah, I I'm gonna be honest. I didn't see advertisements for them till much later this year. Yeah. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Well, I, I just came out of I came out of Heroes aren't hard to find today, and they had like displays for it, and I'm like, oh. Okay. <laughs> um, Maybe not. <laughs> um, but uh, like, so it was a, it was a less attended show, but like for me personally, I cleaned house. Um, like just on the I have enough gas money to get home, and this didn't kill my soul <laughs> level. Um, and uh, Vincent's uh, or v Vincent's wife Stephanie actually sat up a booth of just their art beside me, and um, they did better than. Uh, Vincent and Stephanie sold more art at LexingCon than Heroes Con. Oh wow! Huh. <laughs> um, and, the, and so it's just it it can be like one of those things where it might be a great show for one person and yeah. terrible for the other. Yeah, and exactly. Usually, when there's one bad experience, there's there's two or three good experiences for other people. So, well, it's you know at 
yeah, that, that kind of rolls with the territory. Um, I know all those things have been your efforts, but you're also part of a group now. Like yes. A, um, the only group that I'm remaining in. <laughs> the only group you're remaining in. Tell yeah. me about your group. Uh, it is called The Finest. Um, we're kind of like the 501st Rebel Legion, but we're G.I. Joe. Look, why G.I. Joe? <laughs> Why not? Hello. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just asking. Like, when I was like, I did when, when you when I first saw you talking about the finest. My first thought is, you know, how they used to call Batman and Superman world's finest. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, oh, Supergirl's gonna be in the finest. That was like because you you do a killer Supergirl. Um, so I was like, oh great, she's gonna be doing some more Batman and Superman stuff. And then I'm like, oh wait, no, it's Cover Girl. <laughs> <laughs> So, so tell me about The Finest. Well, The Finest, um, we're a G.I. Joe costuming club. We have members internationally. Um, we're not quite as big as the 501st Rebel Legion and things like that, but we are working on it. Um, what we do is we raise money for veterans organizations. Um, and this year, our charity partner was Canines for Warriors. It was last year, too, but this year it was Canines for Warriors again. Um, and we have a program called Girls of the Finest which um, we produce a calendar um, with various cosplay photo shoots and things in it um, and sell those. And so that plus our other fundraising uh, efforts this year, we've actually raised more than $16,000 for this one charity. Um, and it's still growing. Every, every con we go to, if you find the finest, we're raising money for this charity. or which, Whichever charity we're partnered with, that's who we're raising money for. Do you ever find, uh, I'm going to go back to the finest, but do you ever find that some of the the charity concepts at cons can be abused. Yes. It just it, it maybe it's not maybe it's just my gut instinct, um, but sometimes it's never the big ones. It's never the Ghostbusters. It's never the Five O First. It's never you know Rebel Legion. Any of those actual accredited guys. Um, but there are sometimes when I see some kind of charity something going on, and you know I'm still going to give them a few bucks. Don't get me wrong, but it's just something something that feels off every now and then. Yeah, I've, I've run into a, a few experiences where I'm like, oh, you're super shady. Yeah. Um, but, so, what what is your role with the 501st? Like, like, Finest. That. <laughs> I can't build uh, armor. <laughs> you, you said it too many times. You said 501st a bunch in that sentence. What is your, what is your role with the Finest? I am just a peon. Uh, I don't know. Um, no, this year I You're, you're actually, on a calendar and you have like a trading card or something. <laughs> the trading card anybody can get. No, I do have a trading card this year. Um, I'm working on a costume for another one, which may not be able to get into the Series 3 trading cards, so it may be Series 4 before I get that one. Um but I am a 2018 Girls of the Finest. Oh, oh! I don't have a month. I'm in the back of the calendar, but I'm in the calendar. I'm in the calendar. That's all I'm at, Shay. I'm on the wall with the little bitty 2019 calendar, and I'm dang proud of that 2019 there calendar. There you go. There you go. Um, but yeah, and that's kind of how I've got started. That that's where the whole cosplay guest thing came from. Was was that? So, full circle. So are the, are those ca those calendars are gone now? The though, calendars right? are pretty much gone. Um, we do an Indiegogo towards the end of the year every year. Um, I can send you the links if anybody is ever interested in it. Um, and it usually runs till about December, mid December, and then that's when we cut it off. And then we just get those printed and send them out to everybody. Um, but like I said, if you see any of the finest garrisons at a, a con, they have they are raising money for charity. They have little. Some of them, some of the garrisons have bumper stickers. Some of them have little pins. Some of them, you know, some of us do prints. There's always something going on. And so that stuff goes towards the charity? It goes towards the charity, yes. Okay, sweet. So you can buy sassy prints of you. You can buy sassy prints of me. <laughs> and yep. it goes to charity. And it goes to charity. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, what, about, what, what shows are you excited about coming up? For conventions? Yes. Um, well, this weekend is obviously, I'm really excited because it's my first cosplay guest with my Sassy Pants Prince. Um, it's Augusta Toy and Comic Con in Augusta, Georgia. Um, it's featuring Joe Fest, which obviously is why we have the Girls of the Finest coming down. Um, and that one's going to be fun. It's a one-day show at the Hilton Garden Inn in Augusta. Um, it's $5, or $5 to get into at 9 $10 at, no, $10 at 9 $5 at 10 It's kind of weird. I know. I'm sorry. Rambling. Wait, what? If you want to get in at 9 o'clock, you're considered VIP and you pay $10. Okay, okay. If you want to come in with general admission, it's $5 kind of thing. Huh. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't think I've heard that before. Yeah. So. It's, it's a new concept, but I'm hoping it'll work for them. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, if they did that for Greenville, I'd do that. <laughs> yeah. Green, because that's the like, and that's this isn't a knock. It's <laughs> great for them for having a great show, getting into South Carolina South Comp. Carolina, yeah. Even <laughs> even pre buying the the tickets this year, we had to wait in a pretty long line. And that that's the confusing thing. I'm like, yeah. when can I just not do the line? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> it's never gonna happen. Like, I think I think I get it figured out, and then it just turned around and it flips over. Well, that's the year before I had pre bought my ticket, and I had to wait in a crazy long line. Mm -hmm. So the next year I went. I'm like, well, bump that. I'm just going to buy my ticket at the door. Then the pre buy people are just walking in, and I'm in line. And then I'm like, that's the last time I Here's went. Here's your hint. Come in, on, come in on Friday and go to the store and pick up your wristband. Oh, <laughs> I haven't had that chance yet. Did you meet Carrie always this year? Did you no, go? No, I didn't. I didn't get to meet him. I was chasing Sharon's. <sighs> I wanted to meet Carrie always. I know. And now he's on. He's going to be in a Stranger Things Season I 3. I saw that. The snot, man. Yeah. I wanted to meet carry always um but i was so, marrying nope. somebody i think i don't remember what i was doing what was i doing i don't know but i i think i was marrying someone i don't know but <laughs> you're, i I'm you're either, all blurring together now all, all the days blur together um so you're so excited about that what else um uh then free comic book day i know everybody already has plans for free comic book day you go to the comic book store you camp out for four or five hours before they open and you know you what my plan is books. i have a board meeting oh uh, it's that's nice. <laughs> I have a board meeting during free comic book day, and it, yep. it's terrible. Um, but from 12 to 5 in Concord, North Carolina, um, I am actually the uh, cosplay coordinator for Concord Microcotton this year, which is at Cabarrus Brewery in Concord. Um, there's going to be artists there. There's going to be vendors there. Um, you know, we're going to have a cosplay contest. There's panels. Um, I'll be doing a panel on cosplay and things like that. Um, and the best part about that one, it is 100% free to get into. You do not pay a dime to come into this con. Um, so free comic book day, free Concord Micro Con. Okay. Um, and then the last one that's not that I actually have something to do with, kind of behind the scenes and things like that, is going to be Conapalooza. That's an oh October. yeah, I'm excited about this. Um, it's a three day con. In Tennessee, uh, Kings Kingsport, Kingsport, Tennessee. See, I'm I'm getting mixed up, and I work for the con, um, uh, and I'm actually the programming director for that convention this year. So that's another new adventure. Uh, I can't talk about that hat yet because I don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> I was about to say, do you have? Oh, tell us the details. But I don't no. know what that's going to look like. So far, it's not too stressful, but I'm pretty sure a uh, day of, I'm going to have to get me a whip and start cracking people and running people out of panel rooms and things like that. I'm, I'm looking forward to like what that show is going to look like. Um, this is. You know, doing Faith and Fandom, I only get four Sundays off a year yeah. for Faith and Fandom, so this is one of them. So It's going to be fun. We've got um, Austin St. John is coming, the Red Power Ranger. And um, and uh, Walter, Walter Jones. Jones. The Black Power Ranger. Um, Ernie Hudson will be there. Right, that's that's pretty um, great. The the really creepy looking guy from Return of the Jedi with the thing on his head. And yes, Bib Fortuna. I, I can't do him. I don't like him. He creeps me out. I don't I don't like it. That is right. That's Bib Fortuna. Yeah, Sweet. I don't. I don't like it. That's why I never learned his name. <laughs> I've been doing that um, nerd slam trivia thing for like the last two years. So you, say you should be a, a expert on these I, things. So I've, I've learned because like that, and like I made a. We were at a uh, Oak City doing nerd slam, and um, made a little girl cry because she didn't know Salacious Crumb's name. Like I, you know. If, if it was an adult, I was going to let them you know, do whatever. I'm not going to like be a hard question. So she's like, she knows all about Star Wars. So I, was like, I even looked at her and I was like, hey, sweetie, which Star Wars movie do you want? And she's like, Return of the Jedi. Like, all bold. And I'm like, and I asked her to like, describe the character. I was like, what's the name of the little rat looking creature that sits on the Jabba? See, I don't know that one. <laughs> That's Salacious Crumb. And you know why I know it? Because I bought the Funko Pop. Oh. Um, the Funko Pop that was uh, Jabba, Leia. Oh, we have that one. I should know it. Because <laughs> it says it on the box with Salacious Crumb. And Salacious Crumb's voice actor or puppeteer or something was just at Fayetteville. Huh. So, at Fayetteville Comic Con. So, like, I learned that. So, what what about Conapalooza with, like, because you guys have the vibe of, like, the uh, can't stop, won't stop attitude. Exactly. So, t tell me about that. The, the can't stop, won't stop, as in we go 24 hours a day for three days. <laughs> yeah, there is programming 24 hours a day. 
Um, and really that's kind of the brainchild of Rob, who is the con chair. Um, he just really wanted to bring something that was really fun to the area. And, you know, last year I did not sleep hardly any, and I wasn't, I had, was not on staff last year. <laughs> so it's hard work, um, but it's worth it. So we get it done. And I don't know this yet, but I think Faith and Fandom will have a panel or something or... I'm pretty sure. Yeah. We have we have a meeting coming up in a few weeks. So, so I, I'm I, fairly sure. We haven't made final decisions on panels right, and things like that. But I do know you have one thing that is 100% for sure on what's the that? Sunday service. The, the, the kind of geek yeah, church thing. I'm 99.9% okay. I'm, I'm sure that that one is yes. Um, the panels and things like that, the, the, uh, the, oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anime, late night. Anyway, the, the the leads are going to be coming together for a meeting, and that's probably okay. what they'll talk and decide and things like that. Okay, sweet. Um, so, like, how, like, this is just, I like talking about, like, how did you and I officially click? Because there came at one point where I honestly, you know, I didn't, re you, you watch Buffy? Yeah. Okay, you were dawned into my life. <laughs> like. I just, I just <laughs> poof, ta-da! Like. There, there was a point where Candace was just in my life, and I don't remember her not being in my life, and I don't remember how she got there. It's just like after one Comic Con, it's just like Candace is part of my life, and I don't. I'm saying your name. That's fine. I, it's okay I'm, at this point. I've been trying really hard not to say her like state her like not other name, but yes. So you've been in my life for a while, and I was just like, wait, how did that happen? So like, how how did that? Happened. Well, the best I can remember was when I was at Artist Alley, I used to go through and look at who all was near me in the same row, who was next to me, who was across from me. Things. I just wanted to get a feel of who my neighbors were going to be. And as I'm scrolling through, I see Faith and Phantom. And I'm like, oh, that looks cool. You know, you know, it's different. I want to look into this. I have interest in it. And so I look up your Facebook page and I was like, dude, and I just messaged you and I was like, hey, you know, I'm such and such and I'm going to be a hero's con and we need to meet and this, that, and the other. And it has just, ta-da, <laughs> kind of, yeah. And um, we we talked about you and uh, your family and your stuff in uh, book three. There's a chapter on mm -hmm. cosplay and, uh, you know, building armor and things like that. And there's they're featured in that. So if you want to learn more about what they were doing, at least like, three, four years ago, because that was a million years ago now, um, there is a section on them. If you if you check the books, they are in book three. And um, and you have part of our armor as part of your armor now. Yes. Yes. I have a, <laughs> I have Juggernaut. What else do I have? I think you have the, I, did we give you some of these? We may have, and I just don't remember. I don't There's been so many costumes that have been retired. That, that, that's what I think. Like, I have, the Juggernaut helmet that I have came from them. And that was one of the kids costumes but it, it fits my large head <laughs> well where it looked oversized and adorable on them it's like actually <laughs> battle accurate for me um and they're also uh they're, they've just been a big you know in traveling and doing these shows there are people that become your con family and you know that they, they have been con family for us and we really appreciate them and we don't get to do enough shows together no, anymore it, i credit that to me not doing the artist alley thing as much anymore but um, yeah, it's... Well, it's at the point now there are just so, so many, many. many... There's so many shows that literally you can you can do a show every weekend and not be with your friends. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because some people get burned at one show, so they go to a different show while your friends go to another show. It's just, yep. like, just this weekend, there's, like, three or four shows. Exactly. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it's... They're going to be more like now. Just ask your husband. Does he do the finest too? Is he officially? Yes, he is officially a member too. It okay. Only, it only took him about a uh, six months after me to, for us to get the word back. But yeah, he's he's in the finest. He does Dusty. Okay. That's his go-to. He's steadfast on Dusty, and I we talked about doing other costumes for him. And he's like, I think I want to do Tiger Force Dusty. Okay. Oh, we're gonna stick with the Dusty thing. <laughs> um. There's a. I need the point. I'll point out to you. I'll send it to you at some point. But there is a um, the lead singer of Five Iron Frenzy at one point in time did a, a side band, and they did a rock anthem song about a specific GI Joe episode called Red Eye to Miami. Mm -hmm. 
And um, but it literally is the episode narrated. Yes, you're gonna have to send that to me because so, I'm now sitting here going, "How have I not heard this?" But it's like, uh, like it's uh, it literally is like narrating the episode. And um, uh, but it's called "Red Eye to Miami" by Roper. And um, because like I just remember listening to him like. What is this? Um, <laughs> Were you expecting the PSA at the end? I don't. I don't know. I was like, don't it, stick a fork in the toaster. <laughs> but uh, that's funny GI Joe story. Um, and I doubt my family listens to my <laughs> extended family listens to this. Um, my aunt, growing up, was um. Yeah, have you seen Almost Famous? Okay, that's fine. You don't I have just, to. I just worked with the dude for a uh, little while. Um, but uh, uh, she's basically a wrestling groupie. Um, and I, I don't mean that in an offensive term. That's no, not derogatory just, or slang. Yeah, no, just... she, she she toured with wrestlers, and wherever wrestlers were, she was there. And um, I spent my entire childhood fixated with this picture she had. Because on her mantle, from like six years old up, was a framed photograph of her making out with Sergeant Slaw. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, you know, every time I'd walk in my aunt's house, I'd see the dude, I'd see Sergeant Slaughter <laughs> kissing my aunt. And, um, like, and then, you know, I'd see Sergeant Slaughter on G.I. Joe, and I'm like, why the same <laughs> I was like, why the <laughs> Um and so like and I think that was like my mental association with G.I. Joe forever. It's like I couldn't see G.I. Joe <laughs> without um my aunt. And that uh, so that's that's fun. That's just my life. It's, it's a weird thing. There's also some Ric Flair connections. Uh, <laughs> but Don't the, go there. Don't go there. The G- friendly, 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 friendly. The the G.I. Joe thing with sergeant slaughter just always like tripped me out um so are there any other links or things you would like to point people to or anything else you want to promote or anything for yeah i mean if you're wanting to look for me on facebook or instagram it's matilda king cosplay um like again the boys are adventures in cosplay davis um you can find the finest on facebook i don't think we we do have an instagram it's just not as updated okay so um yeah. That's about it. Yeah, Girls of the Finest has a page too. If you want to check them out, and that way you get the first hand whenever we put the calendars on sale every so year. So, is there going to be a Boys of the Finest? Uh, <laughs> I don't make executive decisions. Um, right, are, are we going to get your husband in like a beach shot of Dusty? Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wouldn't matter if I if I begged him to do it. He's no. That's yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> um. Just, I did have one more thing I'll ask you. Um, because Comic Con culture has blown up. Yes. In the last, in the five years I've been doing, five plus years I've been doing Faith and Fandom, the time that you've been doing this stuff, because you started around the same ish time, right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Um, what has been the worst trend that you've seen? Like, the, the direction that we're heading, as this isn't about a show, but as a culture of Comic Cons, what's the biggest downward trend you see right now it's pro it's, it's not prevalent it's not everywhere but i do see a lot of cosplayers attacking cosplayers um you know in the end we are all big nerds we're dorks we go and dress up in costumes in public and you know it's that's what it is in the end game and it shouldn't matter if you squeeze the silk out of you know the butt of the your purebred silkworms <laughs> in your backyard to make the spandex but, but i worked so hard for that <laughs> um and or or if you you know went and bought your costume on cosplay sky or you know you commissioned somebody to make it or anything like that um you shouldn't look down on anybody for that because like i said in the end we're all just a giant bunch of dorks Running around in a costume with a cape on, some of us. No capes for me, though. What? Your Supergirl had a cape. <laughs> she does, but and no, no long cape for me. You, your, super, <laughs> your Supergirl is literally one of my favorites. I got I to gotta be able to get back into that one soon. 
<laughs> Winter was not kind to Matilda. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, I had to do that Dancing with the Stars thing. And for like about six, eight weeks, I was gangster about my diet, gangster about my exercise. And then, <laughs> and then like in, in the month of post dance, I'm like, I'm a potato. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just did that weight loss challenge at my, my job, and um, I won it, and then turned around, and I was like, oh, the chicken nuggets in my mouth now. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm back down to, to my winning weight. <laughs> okay, okay. Still a long ways to go. Um, so that's the downward trend. What is the, the, what do you, not necessarily trend you see, what do you want to see happen in the Comic-Con culture? I know it's kind of impossible because you're, nobody's going to like everybody. It's just supportive. Um, more so all across the board. Um, you know, I, I would say, you know, I wish we could get more materials and easier access to things, but we, we pretty much have all that at our fingertips now, so that's not even an issue. Um, but again, like the whole people looking down on other cosplayers because they didn't make it or they did this or they did that or maybe you know, they're jealous of this person's whatever, just, again, big happy group of fluffy nerds in spandex. I mean, it's, it is what it is. So that's what we need to be. All happy. <laughs> that's good for me. Um, so once again, uh, I want to thank Matilda Kane Cosplay for being here with us. Again, that name sounds like a cousin of Oswald Cobblepot. Um, I love it. I have no negative to it, but like, I can't like, not see a sassy, like, distant cousin. Of... Well, if it helps anything with the, the mental image, it came from the movie. What movie? Matilda. Okay. Because I had a coworker that used to tell me I look like Matilda all the time. Because I had a little bob, and I would put my hair up on the pigtails every now and then. So what's the cane from? Uh, my grandmother used to call me Candy Cane. Oh, Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm pretty sure I could, like... Like, put Oswald and Cobblepot to the side now, because, like, Matilda and Candy Canes will totally there you go. take that over. Um, but thank you so much for being with us, and I recommend, seriously, check out uh, the stuff that Matilda Kane has done. You can check her uh, her section out in Faith and Fame of Volume 3, and um, you will see her. Look for her at a con near soon, and check out the show she talked about. Thanks so much.